Hello. Ideastone is a micro business. We're trying several different ways of calculating our greenhouse gas emissions because we can't meet our pledge to reach net zero by 2027 without knowing how much we emit now. We're sharing our progress and the things we're learning. We've now calculated our emissions of greenhouse gases using several different methods. The most recent was using the UK government's greenhouse gas conversion factors for company reporting, which yielded a result significantly lower than the one calculated using the business carbon calculator, which is recommended by the SME Climate Hub. What did we learn from using the conversion factors? This is potentially a more accurate calculation than using a calculator where the conversion factors are hidden or at least it feels more accurate. It certainly included more aspects of our business than were explicitly included in the business carbon calculator. An example is the emissions associated with our use of water and its discharge and treatment. But perhaps this is just an illusion in that we're doing the calculation ourselves rather than inputting some numbers into a calculator that does the calculation for us. Despite feeling more accurate, we wonder if the conversion factors have underestimated our scope 3 emissions. Using this method, our scope 1 emissions were calculated at 237 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent which compares very favourably with the 238 kilograms calculated using the business carbon calculator. We don't have any scope 2 emissions because we use electricity from renewable sources. Using the greenhouse gas conversion factors, our scope 3 emissions were just under 113 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent, compared to 862 kilograms using the business carbon calculator. Experience and research suggest that Scope 3 emissions are often underreported by businesses and that they can comprise as much as 90% of an organisation's emissions. Using the conversion factors, our Scope 3 emissions comprise just over 32% of the total. Given the nature of our business, this feels wrong. How do we know which is right? Ultimately, you could argue that it doesn't really matter which is right, so long as you've included all your possible emission sources in your calculations. This is because the calculation of emissions is only there to provide you with a baseline against which to measure your actions, and their success in reducing the total. So whatever calculator you decide to use, it's important to be consistent and to use the same one when you've taken action to reduce emissions, so you're measuring the effect against the same baseline. We'll keep looking at this issue to see if we can work out why the significant discrepancy arises, but our feeling is that going back to first principles may have underreported our emissions. For the purposes of moving forward, therefore, we are going to assume that the figure from the business carbon calculator is a better representation of the emissions from our business, and we'll use this as the baseline for taking action. <laughs> That's all for now, but if you're interested in what we're doing and want to keep up to date with our progress, please subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And we have several online learning courses on Udemy and Allison. You can find these by following the links from our website. <laughs>